Hi class, in this lesson we're going to take a look at uh, volume and surface area, which is section 9.4 in your textbook. And here um, we want to first start off with talking about what a square uh, versus a cubic inch looks like, and that will set up our whole discussion for volume of what actually volume looks like. And here we see an inch, which is just this dimension. And if we had it squared, we would just be seeing the face of this uh, cube. And then if we have our uh, length times width, and then now all of a sudden we have depth, now we have a square inch. And so we basically, if you've seen a sugar cube before that, that's kind of what volume looks like if you're, uh, if you're actually stacking sugar cubes up or whatever. It's like filling up a shape kind of like this. And so if we, if we want to talk about the volume of this particular box, we describe it by how many cubes it would be filled up of. So here we've got four inches high by five inches wide by three inches deep. And so if we multiplied four times five times three, we would get our total of how many uh, cubes are actually in this shape. Okay. So what we see is that there's, uh, on this face, there's 20 squares. And on this face, there's 12 squares. So we can figure out the surface area. That's a whole different thing. Um, but the volume is how many squares it consists of. And so we can, we're going to be doing both in this lesson. We're going to be looking at how many cubes you would see on the overall face of this thing, and then how many cubes would be on the inside. So now, of course, we've got a nice little formula that we'll do uh, both for us. So volume is length times width times height. And then the, uh, to get the actual surface area, it's actually this longer formula, which tells you that basically you've got two of this face. So if I was to actually click on this and get my pen going, um, I would have this face on the front side, and I'd also have it repeated on the back side. This face here I have once, and then I also have it on the side here. And then I have this face here on the top, and I also have it on the bottom. So notice each of these, you're doing length times width, length times height, uh, width times height, and you have two of each of them gives you your overall service area. Okay, so we'll be working through with those. But uh, uh, volume is equal to the base. Uh, area of a base times a height. Now this is a concept that we're going to see over and over and over, and it doesn't just apply to uh, squares, uh, cubes, sorry. It applies to most shapes, is that if you figure out what the base area is uh, and times it by the height, you've got volume. So in other words, if I just take the base, which is 5 times 3, and get 15, so there's 15 cubes, basically, and multiply that by how tall this thing is stacked, so we got 15 once, twice, three times, four times. So if I actually multiply that, that tells me how many stacks of 15 I have. That'll tell me how many cubes I have. So taking a look at a um, trapezoid shape, we can do that exact same thing. So hopefully you can see that this is a trapezoid. We're just, we don't really get to see the, the rest of the shape, but it kind of goes off in this direction over there um, in the background to make it a little more three-dimensional looking. But uh, the bottom line is we need to figure out the easiest way to do it is you don't want to call this front face the base if it was standing upright. You still wouldn't want to call it the base. You'd want to call one of these sides the base because we know how to find its area. And the way that we do that is we're supposed to average this length. This is base one. So we average this length and this length. So we multiply them and divide by two. That would give me what a, if I was changing it a rectangle would look like, what its actual base would be. So I multiply these two. Um, I'm sorry, I add them to average them. Add them and divide by 2, so I get 9 plus 5, and then divide by 2 will give me the length of what it would be if it was just a rectangle. So 9 plus 5 divided by 2 is going to give me 14. Divide by 2, and I get 7. So 7 is the base here, and the height is the 3. So if I do 7 times 3, I get 21 is my base area. Okay? And I'll say BA for short, so that's base area. So that's what, if I drew another little trapezoid on the bottom, this whole thing would be 21. So the key is, if the base is 21, then I want to know how tall it is and multiply that together, and I'll get area. So I'll get base area times, so base area here is 21, and my height is 4. So if I just take my calculator and do 21 times 4, I'll have the volume of the shape, which is 84 inches to the third power. Now, the reason why it's to the third power is because we multiplied inches once, inches uh, twice to get the, the height, and then inches the third time, which uh, it's not actually right there, but the seven inches wide. So I multiplied inch three times. That's why it's inch to the third power. And we call it cubic inches. 
Okay, so let's take a look at one where we have to do Huron's formula. And what we'll see here on this shape is that um, we've got a triangle where we know the side lengths are 6, 9, and 9. And we know the height of this uh, piece of pie looking shape is 3. So the key here is, is as I did before, we want to use Huron's formula to find the base area. And by the way, base, when I say it, it could be the top or it could, it's, it's replicated on the bottom. So if we're doing it on the top, then it's the same thing as what's on the bottom. So we're just looking at the top part of this shape right now. But uh, to find its area, we do Huron's formula, which takes these side lengths, uh, 6, 9, and 9, and we add them up and then divide by 2. And that gives us a total of 12. That gives us this S value that we plug into Huron's formula down here. And then we take that and we set it up to where it's the uh, S is 12 times 12 minus uh, one, A, which is 9, times 12 minus the B, which is also 9, and then times 12 minus the C, which is 6. And then we multiply all that out and square root it. That's going to look like this. <coughs> right here like I just wrote it, and then we actually do the square root of what this all multiplies to be, which is 648, and that gives us about 25.5. Now what our job is to do from there is to recognize that this is the area of this top piece of pie, uh, just, just one of the base is what it's called. So this is my base area, and what I need to do is take my base area and multiply it by the height of 3, which will give me my overall area, so I've got 25.5, and times that by 3, I'm going to get 76.5, and that is my volume, so inches cubed. So my overall volume, you find the base area, even though it's a triangle, we use Huron's formula, and then we multiply it by the height, and that gives us our volume. Okay. So always base area times height is the, the trend we want to do. Okay, now this one's a little bit different because we have to and you have one like this in your homework, that's why I have this here, is because it's not a triangle. See, the nice curve uh, changes things for us. So to do this, we actually need to find area of a sector. Now, that's a little bit different. Uh, the next one might help us out. But um, here we have our circle. If I was to continue this, we'd have a whole circle on the rim. And that will look like our area is pi r squared, and what we want is a portion of it. So we're going to have to do a little bit of connection of the uh, uh, proportions and ratios that we did a couple lessons ago. So here we go. If I have my whole circle, so let's, let's call this the original base, and we're going to know that my radius is 7 inches from this diagram right here. Okay, And so to find the area of the whole shape, we would multiply 7 squared by pi. Okay, So that would give me the whole area of this whole shape. But I only want 40 degrees of it. To get 40 degrees of this uh, 7 squared pi, in other words 49 pi, to get 40 degrees of it, I need to realize that I want to know what part is it, so what part of the pi is it out of the 49 pi. If I'm looking at 40 degrees, out of 300, 360 degrees. <clears throat> so this is my proportion work. So this is what part out of the whole area is my 40 degrees out of the 360 degrees. So you have to set up a proportion like this. And then if I just multiply 49 to the other, 49 pi, sorry, to the other side, that will give me P equals, on my calculator, 40 times 49 pi. And then divide that by... 360 gives me 17.10. Uh, so 17.1 basically is how much my base area is. So this is equal to my base area. So that's the bottom part or top part either way of my piece of pie. All I have to do is multiply that by 3, which is my height. So if I take 17.1 times it by 3, That'll give me my overall area times 3, not divide by 3, sorry. That gives me 51.31. So 51.31 is my overall volume in inches cubed. OK. 
Okay. So now let's take a look at uh, what it would be to find the volume of a cylinder. Volume of cylinder is uh, pretty similar to what we just did. It's actually easier. Uh, we need to find the area of a circle and then multiply it by its height. Uh, you'll be asked about uh, the surface area of a cylinder also, and that is just the uh, base area. Sorry, the uh, reading the top up there is the rim, the circumference of the circle, uh, times the height. So if I want to know the uh, lateral surface, uh, what how much area it covers. You just take the circumference of one of the rims, the top or the bottom, and you figure out what that is and multiply it by how, by how tall it is, and that will give you the area, the lateral area there. And that's, this is the formula for that if you want. So now, if I want the overall area, I would add in the top and the bottom surface area. So I add, this is the area for top, and it would be repeated on the bottom. So total surface area, you do this guy, and then you do the area of the top times two because you have two of them. And that's what this formula is down here. And lastly, my, my volume, again, is base area, which is this part, times your height. So, uh, Pearl Art Supply Store sells paint solvent in a cylindrical can that has a diameter of four inches and a height of six inches. So the giant economy size can of the same solvent has a diameter twice as large. The height of the can is the same and costs three times as much as a smaller can. So which one can is a better deal? Well, to know that, you need to know how much uh, content is in these cans. I mean, just by the size of the can, knowing it costs three times as much doesn't tell us everything. We need to know how much we're looking at inside of these things. So our job here on this particular problem is to figure out how much volume each shape has. We'll have the small shape here, and then we'll have the large shape over here to identify which can is the actual better deal. So I need to know how much volume the small can has. It says it has a diameter of four inches, well, I don't care about the diameter. If the diameter is 4, I really want the radius. The radius is 2. So to find the uh, volume of the shape, I need to multiply that by pi after I square it. So pi times 2 squared is going to give me 4 pi. And that is the base area of this uh, container. If this is my base area, if I was to draw this out, so this is the 4 pi is the circle, and then basically I've got to multiply by its height, and I'll have my overall volume. So my height is 6 inches. So all I have to do is take 4 pi times it by 6, and that will give me 24 pi. So this is the volume for my small can. The large can says the diameter is twice as large, so my diameter would be 8 which means my radius is 4, and so then I take that and multiply by pi after squaring it, so pi times 4 squared is going to give me 16 pi is my base area. My height's the same, so I've got my 16 pi is my base area. You multiply it by your same height, although I drew it taller for some reason. Uh, this is 6, sorry for my terrible diagram. Um, so multiply that by 6, so I've got 16 times 6, pi is going to be 96 pi is my volume for this one. Okay, So now the key is to actually figure out how much it costs. So if this one, it doesn't actually tell us how much it costs, let's say it costs $1. Well now this one costs $3. It says it costs three times as much. So they don't actually tell us, tell us how much it costs, we just need to know which one's a better deal. So this one's 24 pi, so let's actually take that and get a real number. 24 times pi gives me 75.4. And then 96 pi is 301.6. So now if we're doing dollars for dollars, if this is $1 and this is uh, $3, I want to have I want to be looking at the same thing. So if I want I want to know well how much would it cost for one dollar. So what I need to do over here is divide this by three to make that a one dollar. How much am I getting for one dollar over here? So take three hundred and divide it by three, and that's going to give me one hundred point five three. So basically for one dollar I'm getting a hundred and hundred point five three um, cubic inches, and over here I'm getting for one dollar seventy five point four cubic inches. So in this case. The larger can is the better deal. Okay, so now we've got a cake problem. 
where we're actually going to be comparing types of cakes. We've got one's rectangular and the other one is, uh, is circular. So hopefully you've seen a rectangular cake before and sheet cake is what it's called. And so we've got a rectangle one. I'll just draw the actual rectangle and we've got a uh, circular cake. Okay, so our job is to figure out that the length of this rectangular is 12, the width is 9, and it tells us its height is 4. So I know it's a terrible drawing, but there it is. And then this one says it's got a uh, round cake with radius of 7. Okay, and then it tells us its height is also 4. So there's another circle underneath there. Again, terrible diagram, but I think you get the point here. Um, here, we just have to know that we multiply our length times our width times the height, so it's just 12 times 4 times 9, which gives me 432 uh, inches cubed. And over here, to find this uh, volume, we multiply our radius squared, so it's pi r squared, so it's uh, 49 pi, because 7 squared is 49, and the, that's the uh, base area, you times that by 4, so I'm going to actually get a decimal. Uh, I want to get a decimal so I can actually compare it with the 432. So I'll multiply 49 times 3.14, or pi, and then times that by 4, and I've got 615.52. So what looks originally like it might be a better deal, because the, the sheet cake, I drew it pretty big. Um, over here, the uh, circular cake, the round cake, is actually the better deal if they cost the same because it's got more volume, and this is inches cubed, all right? So now we're going to take a look at uh, the volume and lateral surface area of a cone, and you have a question that specifically asks you just for the lateral surface area. To have that, you have this wonderfully ugly formula uh, that will give you the actual lateral surface area of a cone. And so if I know my radius is 5 and I know my height is 10, what I can do is just take that and plug it in to find the lateral surface area. So that what that does is that does not include the uh, the, the surface area of the, the base of the cone. It's just giving you, if I was to unravel this thing and kind of have my shape be like this, my cone that would wrap up, this, this formula is giving us this actual lateral surface area. So here on this particular problem where I said this was 5 and that was 10, uh, for my radius it would be pi times 5 square root of 5 squared plus uh, 10 squared. And then I would just type that in my calculator and square root it. But make sure when you do your calculator, you actually put this in parentheses or just go ahead and simplify it first. This would be uh, pi, oops, sorry, pi times my 5. So 5 pi square root of uh, 25 plus 100. So 125 is what you would need to do in your calculator. So 5 pi square root of 125. So that is 5 second pi square root of 125 gives me 175, so 175.62 um, inches squared or feet squared or whatever we're calling this, so units squared <clears throat> for the lateral surface area. Okay, so the volume of a cone, if you put it inside of a cylinder, you can kind of see, it's sort of hard to visualize, but it's one-third of that of the cylinder. So basically, if you took your cone and assumed it was just a cylinder, find the volume of the cylinder and then divide it by three and you'll have your volume of what just the cone part is. Okay, so let's actually do a problem like that where we've got volume and surface area of a cone with a height of 10 and a base of eight. So we've got a height here of 10, base of eight, very similar to the problem I just made with the five. Um, and we've got to do our lateral surface area. So Let's do that first, and then we'll come back and do the volume. So here we just do our pi times 8 times the square root of 8 squared, so 64, plus 8 squared, which is 100. So we've got uh, 8 pi times the square root of 164 will give me the lateral surface area. So if I do that, 8 pi uh, times the square root of 164 gives me 321.86 uh, inches squared or a uh, meter squared, sorry. Meters squared is my lateral surface area around this uh, around this cone. So now the volume of the cone, to do that, I need to know my base area of the cone. I need to times that by my height. And that'll give me the, that would give me this whole cylinder. And so I need to just divide that by three and that'll give me the leftover cone part. So the base area is I take my radius, which is eight, 
and I say 8 squared times pi, that'll be the base area, so 64 pi is my base area, times it by my height, uh, which is 10, so times 10, so that's 640, so 640 pi would give me the area of the whole uh, cylinder, and then I just divide that by 3. So if I take my calculator, 640 divided by 3 gives me 213, and then times that by pi gives me a total of uh, 670.21, I kind of went off the side there, 0.21 is the leftover part of meters cubed. Okay, So that would be my actual volume of this particular cube. And we're going to talk about the volume and surface area of a sphere. A sphere has a set volume that is created and derived by calculus where we could figure out exactly how many cubic units are inside of this or any sphere. And you can imagine my drawing there was really high tech and wonderful, but you could take and figure out exactly how many cubic units, that's cubes, that could fill up any ball like basketball, golf ball, what have you, and parts of cubes. And that would take an approximation work that comes out of calculus for us. And it does come out every time with this 4 thirds pi r cubed. And then the surface area, that's the amount of square shapes, or square tiles that you could array around a shape. That would be this big S for surface area would be found by 4 pi r squared. And this... Uh, little bit you can see it kind of working in here on this in, if you put this ball inside of a cylinder that would perfectly wrap around it so just maybe take a paper towel or wrap around it the height of the paper towel would be exactly the height of the ball and the height here okay the height would be twice the radius the area of the base would be pi r squared so the exact sliver in the middle would match this bottom base here well we're told that we walk in and there's a punch bowl that's in the shape of a hemisphere. Perhaps you've seen this before where uh, just imagine you remove the top of this shape and you're looking at something that looks like that. And that is your punch bowl. And it has a radius of 12 inches. So the distance from here to here is 12. Then it says there's a cup part of a ladle that's also in the shape of a hemisphere. So we have a smaller yet rather large ladle, if you ask me. So a ladle would be something like that, where it's got now a five inch radius. It says, if the punch bowl is clear full, so we are to the top, how many full ladles of punch are there in the bowl? This is a simple division problem. All we have to do is figure out exactly how much volume of punch there is here. So punch volume. And then we've got to figure out how much one scoop, one ladle volume is. And then we just divide them. Take the punch bowl and divide it by how many, uh, how many scoops of ladle volume you would get. And then we have our answer because this is how many full ladles of punch are there in the bowl. So all we have to do is come up to our formula right here, which is 4 thirds pi r is our radius of 12 cubed. We didn't have to calculate that. We just leave it alone for now. That's 12 to the third. And then divide that by the ladles volume, which would be 4 thirds pi 5 cubed. And what's super awesome about this uh, context problem, what's super wonderful about how I paused and said don't plug anything in yet, is that we can reduce now. So really this is just 12 cubed divided by five cubed. And why that is, is because if this is this division bar is the four thirds would have canceled, the pi would have canceled. And all that's left is the 12 cubed on top and the five cubed on bottom because the context of this problem calls for that. So then you can run to your calculator and go ahead and plug that in. And when I plug that in my calculator, I get 13 0.824 ladles of punch, full ladles. And that would be my solution to this context problem. 
I hope you find success using these formulas in the lab. If you have any problem-specific questions, please use the Ask My Instructor feature of the lab and let me know, and I will help you out.